as you can see, the paint's here. Now, I don't need all that for this, but I bought a job lot of 12 cans because I'm going to use them all because I'm going to do the wheels as well and, well, you may as well run. It's cheaper to buy more, you know it is. Right, okay. So today what I've got to do is rub down on the bodywork, flat it down in order to key up the surface and deal with any imperfections that may be there. And as with all these things, I need a guide coat over that. So I'll be spraying over a black guide coat to see what imperfections are left after that. Let that dry, then flat them out and basically deal with as much as I can and then put one decent coat over the top of that so that, and that has time to dry. You know, there's a problem with all these paint videos is that they are finite in time. I'm governed in what I can do because of drying times. So right now, rubbing it down, it's gonna probably take a couple of hours to do all five pieces, especially the tank, make sure that's absolutely perfect. That's the centerpiece of any paint job on a muscle bike. And once that's done, then I've got to let it dry. I've just got to leave it for a couple of days and I just want to get stuck in, so there's no need for more chat. You just want to see what happens. Let's get on with it.
Right, okay. So that's rubbed it all down. I've busted the shine off everything, knocked down all the edges, and I can't feel any of the imperfections underneath. So where the old pattern deco lines and stripes were, can't feel it at all. But what the fingers can't feel, the eye can certainly see. So I need to put a guide coat over everything. One coat of black, just one, over everything, and that is the biggest, easiest way for a telltale to know where there's any imperfections you need to rub out. So that's kind of a sacrificial coat, a guide coat. A guide coat is many things. It can be a dust, literally a dust coat over the top for the purposes of rubbing down so you know where you have and have not rubbed. So it's guiding you for rubbing down. Also, it can be a visual guide to where there's any imperfections. So then you need a solid coat, so that guides you. So a guide coat is many things. In my case, I need to be able to see where these lines might be, where there's any imperfections here that I can't physically feel, but might show up when you look at it. Because this bike's gonna be black, and there really is no prisoners with black. There's no excuses, you have to get it right. And I'm gonna take my time to try and do that. I'm using all of the tips and tricks that I learned from my buddy Milo, God rest him, and of course from Mackie, who's coming to paint this. And that's one other thing, the point was, Mackie was said to me, rub down with 800 grip, six to 800 grip before paint, but on this instance, for this particular one, I've rubbed down with 400. 400's a bit coarser than I might have rubbed down with normally. It doesn't need to be 400, and it can leave lines. However, I'm using this tough paint. Now, this tough paint is a chip resistant substance. It doesn't dry rock hard. It's kind of got a flexibility to it, and it needs a good key. It does say so on the tin. I'm just following the instructions on the tin. So, Ultimately, I've gone with a 400, then I can put a guide coat over the top, nice and solid all the way over, and then I'll be flattening that back with an 800. That will then give me a proper finish. But at the moment, this is literally a rough up just to get everything that I'm gonna put on top to grip. Because like I said, that tough black does need, or the tough paint, whatever color you use, does need a good key. It really does. 400 is pretty much essential because I've tried it with 800 in the past, and you sometimes get fish eyes and it kind, of, it kind of doesn't look like it lays right. It kind of it takes a while to float out. With a 400, it floats out straight away. So it's just going with what I've had as experience in the past. Before I can do that though, I've got a couple of little repairs to make, a couple of chips on the other pieces that I've got to repair because rather than rubbing them all out, taking all the paint off, there's a couple of little chips. Just gonna put some filler in those, get those done, and then I can get some black over it.
All right, watch out, there we go. Now, I hadn't made a decision yet until I painted this whether to have this satin black or gloss black. I kind of like satin black, it's always been called not rat bike. I'm not going rat bike with this, that would just be a tragedy. This is going to be a really nice bike and I, satin black's a nice finish. There are many bikes on the market that are satin black and gloss black with steel and so that would have been nice but I think it's definitely going to be gloss. Having seen the tank with that lovely liquid gloss finish, I mean that will dry satin because it's satin paint. The tail unit's already dry and satin but that well, that dry satin, I think we're going to clear coat it. So it looks like lovely, that lovely rich liquid gloss. Now I've put one thick wet coat over the whole lot. It's only a base coat. You don't need to make six fat coats, not for base coat, because it's going underneath the clear coat, the lacquer itself at the end. And Mackie's going to come down and do that on top of the artwork. We discussed both ways and he said it's going to make an absolutely evil mess in here, but I don't care. We can clear it up. It's not an issue. It's the paintwork that really, really matters. And we've got a cool kind of retro 70s style paint job planned. Uh, I think you'll like it. Um, I don't even know what it's going to be like because he's a creative artist and he's going to do it on the day. So that's the kind of theme we were going with. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I won't tell you any more. I won't spoil it. But it, that's obviously the base colour. So that will be the primary colour of the job. And when we clear coat it, I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. Now it doesn't matter that I bought satin, I've got 12 cans of it because I've got to do the wheels with it as well and I want to do the fork leg bottoms and I want to do the swing arm possibly, I don't know, don't know yet, but either way I wanted the satin anyway and it doesn't matter if you're going to clear coat it, it'll just be glossy when it's done. So that's going to get at least two weeks to cure and the usual test is if you can go real close to it and you can't smell thinners, it's usually mostly if not nearly all evaporated so that's usually a good test so I'll keep checking that that will stay right where it is going nowhere I'm not needing the garage for the next few days wish me luck it's all going to come out okay it's it's early days while it's still damp like this you don't know but at the moment it's all looking good thanks for watching see you next time